Jacqueline Bowie from AC Engineering, and today we'll be presenting the proposed design for the Peterson Gym pedestrian bridge. For this project, there will be several aspects covered, including transportation, geotechnical, structural, and construction and engineering, which will, this will be described more in depth later on. The purpose is to design a bridge to cross over 50 feet street and it will adhere to Caltrans Bridge Design Specifications, ADA Regulations, and AFSHO LFRD Guide Specifications for the design of pedestrian bridges. This bridge will allow great separation to cross over to the new classrooms in the Peterson Gym and to the athletic facilities around, leading to a decrease or elimination of wait time for pedestrians on the traffic lights. The main benefits of this project are to mainly reduce time, as I mentioned already, but also to provide fast and easy access from one side of the school to where the other facilities are located. The proposed bridge location will be placed in front of the Peterson Gym, crossing to the Grass Island located between 55th Street and the Drop-Off Road. The design factors considered our location, and this was mentioned already. For aesthetics, it's just a simple design. It will be pleasant to the view, and it will represent the school. Lastly, for accessibility, ADA regulations need to be followed. So there is an easy access to pedestrians with disabilities. From the bridge overview description, it's just going to be two elevators as well as the stairway access, and the bridge itself is going to be composite steel beam with concrete slab. Hi, I'm Hans Wesseling. I'm the transportation engineer responsible for the Peterson Gym pedestrian bridge. The key issues that caused this bridge to be built was a large increase in the traffic, foot traffic, mainly at this intersection, when people are coming from the ARC trying to get to the Peterson Gym now that there's new classes in the gym. Also, the Viejas Arena has become uh, a lot more popular and there's numerous events where people need to go from the parking structure to the event, as well as the Aztec Recreation Center where lots of people work out every day, plus they all need to park somewhere, which usually results in the parking structure, so they have to cross over 55th Street. Also, the traffic wait times will be reduced because this crosswalk, this crosswalk, this crosswalk, all of these will be eliminated. So it'll just be one bridge across, and all of the traffic will be funneled into one area. So we decided to make an elevator, and the elevator, we decided to go with the 2,500 count, as well as for the emergency, we decided that we don't need the emergency officials to use the elevator, so that wasn't considered, so the 3,500 pound wasn't necessary. The stairs, we wanted to be as visually pleasing as possible, since we decided to go with the stairs. So we decided to go with an L, and then on the other side, it's just a long flowing out the other side. Also, the location of the stairs is was very important because we needed to have all of the traffic flowing. So the traffic will come up the stairs and come across this cro new crosswalk proposed and come along here. The width of these stairs, we decided to make extra wide because we wanted room for growth. So we decided to just keep the stairs very wide and uh, have lots of room for growth. The railing that we're going to have all along the street is going to prevent people from jaywalking, which will keep the safety down. Um, the placement also is part of the, we wanted it to be very flowing to, go, to get to campus. There will be many social objections to our project. However, with our two easy detours to use, we're going to try to reduce that when we do have to completely close 55th Street. We're also going to work with the SDSU to try to avoid any event congestion. Environmental objections, we're going to try to control by explaining that all of the cars that normally wait for the pedestrians to cross are going to be free, so it's going to improve traffic conditions as well as reducing the carbon emissions. We also want this to be a strong point of Aztec pride and we will also keep our hours of construction down as much as possible and try to not work late into the night. For sustainability, we're going to use the triple bottom line approach. 
and try to reduce any negative impacts on the people and the planet as much as we can, as well as having a profit for um, the safety. We want this to be an Aztec Pride landmark for many years to come, so we left much room for growth in our project, for the school to increase in size even more than it has, and the average wait time for everybody, pedestrians and vehicles, will be reduced. Hi, my name is Juan Villasenor, and I was the engineer in charge for the geotechnical portion of this project. The objective was to provide an assessment and recommendation from a geotechnical engineer perspective for the design of the pedestrian bridge at San Diego State University. Since the field investigation was performed by a different company, our first priority was to generate a boring plan to denote where we wanted the CPT or cone penetration testing to be performed at the site. As you can see, this is the um, area that we wanted the test to be performed. Based on the field data that we gathered from the company, um, we were able to plot three graphs. Um, the first one, depth versus cone tip resistance. The second one, depth versus slip friction. And the third one, depth versus pore water pressure. Using this graph, we were able to uh, classify the soil using uh, common known equations. Also uh, classify our, our layers. And based on our layer classification, we were able to determine that most of our soil consisted of sand. Since our soil was mostly sand, we were, we were, um, we found, and we live on a state prone to earthquakes, we had to perform a liquefaction analysis to make sure that the soil or the sand was to not liquefy during an earthquake using the soft software called Seedlink. And based on the software, it was determined that no liquefaction would take effect at the site in the case of our own. Our foundation design and recommendation for this project, we analyzed, firstly we analyzed the shallow foundation system, and it was determined based on the loads that a shallow foundation system was not adequate for a project. So we then went ahead and designed for a deep foundation system, used using the beta method. Um, we, we designed for a deep pile with a diameter of 0 0.4 meters or 1.3 feet and a depth of 10 meters or 33 feet. Our piles are going to be drilled in a silty sand layer. A total of two pile foundations, one in each column, will be required to support a pedestrian bridge. We also analyzed the piles for settlement, each pile, using a computer software. And it was determined that the piles will settle less than the acceptable value of 0 0.5 inches. Uh, this is the general site plan of how the bridge is going to look once it's built. Our two pile systems are going to be located, one in this area, and the other one is going to be in this area. So this concludes our geotechnical presentation for the pedestrian bridge at San Diego State University. Hi, I'm Jose Ventura and, and I'm the structure engineer for this project. And then we're going to start with the structural design. The materials for this design is going to be concrete with 150 pounds per cubic feet. That's the unit weight. And the compression strength of concrete is 4,000 pounds per square inch. And we're going to use steel, 60 psi for the yield strength and we're going to use double steel for the ratings. Okay, with the slab design, we're going to use a 8-inch thick and force concrete slab. We're going to use number 4 river at 10-inch OC for the main steel reinforcement. This is this one here, go down. And number 3 river at 7-inch OC for shingle steel. And this is based on AC I we're going to use steel beams, 2 W2D times 211 I beams from HTM standards, A92, 60 PSI U strengths, and they're going to be 6 feet apart. We're going to have also two reinforced concrete tie columns, and they're going to be 
two and a half feet by two feet, and eighteen feet high. And for the vertical and front end, it's gonna be number ten rebars, and for the lateral side, it's gonna be three number three rebars. And this is also based on SCI tracking code. We're gonna place two elevators at each end of the bridge, and these are the specifications of the elevators. They're gonna be 2,500 pounds capacity with a standard speed of 150 feet per minute. And the platform size is gonna be seven feet by five feet, one inch. And for the elevator tower, we're gonna use two side concrete walls and the rear wall is gonna be laminated glass. And it's gonna be 12 feet wide by 10 feet long and three feet high. For the, for the railing design, we're gonna use ASTM grade 123 albana steel. The railing, the both of the stairs and the bridge is gonna be 40 inch tall. And for the bridge railing, we're gonna use three pipes, three inch albana steel pipes for the top, and uh, two lower pipes are gonna be two inch. And for the stair railing, it's gonna be two inch albana steel pipe and this is the final design we're gonna have. Hello, my name is Michael Manzano. I'm the construction engineer for the AZ Engineering Incorporated. General conditions, um, we're looking for having high strength um, components in our concrete, so we're trying to range from between 30,000 to 60,000 PSI. Um, we're looking for lightweight in addition to that, um, so we have less time to um, procure the uh, travel time of the materials to the job site. Uh, modular construction, so it's easily doesn't have to be so so hectic in, in order to put the project together. So we want to have something that just um, puts uh, puts together easily. Um, easier installation and low maintenance um, and attractive appearance. Okay. okay. So here we have the site plan. Um, we have an aerial photo of the um, cactus in the area of the um, Aztec uh, uh, 55th Street. And here in yellow, in the yellow outline, we have here is the material and equipment storage area. We have all our um, materials for the building project here. Um, north of that, we're gonna have the mobile trailers for all the foremen and the supervisors um, to plan out the um, project. Um, here in red, we're gonna have the temporary fencing of the job site for, for um, students during class sessions so they don't uh, interfere with the construction schedule. And here in green outline will be the parking for the construction workers and um, other equipment or anything that needs to be um, close by to the project site. Okay, so here we have the project cost estimates. We're looking around 80, around 80, 80,000 of um, studies of the soil design, uh, design loads, traffic, and consulting. Um, labor around 450,000 plus. Um, will in, probably include around seven crews, varying from different skill sets, from like electrical to foundation to demo to structural steel, concrete, and um, uh, that'll, that'll include around 30, 30 workers per day. Uh, materials around 850,000. Um, equipment and reno, um, crane, boom cranes, um, supply trucks, and whatnot is 220,000. Miscellaneous costs and we're coming uh, with a rough range around 1.8 to $2 million for the entire project. Um, duration, we're looking for this project uh, around to nine to 13 months. That'll include factors such as procurement materials, restrictions um, during the class sessions, existing demo weather and unforeseen factors. Uh, we're looking to start the project around May 2011, have 60% completion by December 2011, and um, completed structurally by April 2012, and um, with inspection after that final usage by June 2012. Our service life is about 75 years. Um, it will depend on these different factors here, these maintenance and performance. So, and um, thank you. This is Michael Lozano, the construction engineer.